Right, so let's journey back to our original TerraGen setup. Sorry, not TerraGen, World Machine. So what I need to do at this point is I need to add a few more kind of outputs and I need to add some processing in order to build a color map. So what I'm going to do is add a couple more little things to this that will do that. So what we need is something called coverage, okay, a coverage color generator, which is going to go just here. And then that is going to output to a bitmap. Now, I'm pretty colorblind, so I always put these in extremely bright primary colors, which works out quite well, really. And I'll demonstrate why. Now, if we go up here to our macros, okay, one of the macros we get is basic coverage. If you don't have that, um, just go and look on the World Machine forums. Um, they have all sorts of add-ons and macros for World Machine. But this is the one that I'm going to be using, and it's the basic coverage macro. Okay. Um, if I just go here, you can actually add your basic stuff. There it is there, basic coverage. Okay. So if I then click on this, and then just click down here inside my filters, and then I'm just going to right click, ideally to stop it being made anymore, otherwise I'll have loads. Okay. Now, what I want to do is I want to take this, which is our primary output or height field, and feed it into our terrain input on this. Now, if I go here, you can see that we have this, which is a color map. Um, the thing is, at the minute, the colors are kind of muted, and they're not what I need. Um, what I need are quite precise red, green, blue colors. And again, I'll explain why shortly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take things like the sand, which is here, and I'm going to make it a pure blue. So if I take my red to zero, my green to zero, and my blue to 255, and click OK. And now you can see blue up there. Next, I'm going to take my rock layer and my rock layer, I'm going to make pure green. Okay, like so. And then the vegetation and erosion, I'm going to make the same color. So I've got blue, green, these will obviously be red. Oops, give me a second, because I just have to explain to you. Reluctant kitten. Where the literature is. Sorry about that. So red, 255. Just peering at it. Would you believe I've actually got its training thing in here? So that I can make sure it goes. Right, so 255500. Zero, zero. Click OK. And you'll see that's coloured red now. Finally, the erosion. It's important that I do this. <coughs> so 255500. Zero, zero. OK. So now I have this solid color, like that. And I can change a few of the things if I want, like slope cut off and all the other things. Well, there's some presets in here if I want. But I don't want those. I want this. And if it helps, you can also save this as your export map, like so. Right then, click OK. And I'm going to keep the height out, out, uh, output exactly the same. I don't need to link this to that. But what I do need to do is I need to generate oh, one bit a second. I do need to generate um, a map for the sorry, for the colour. So oh, God almighty. One bit a second. Sorry about this. Tutorials where I'm cleaning litter boxes at the same time. How bloody horrible is that? Good God almighty. Right then, um, bitmaps. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a bitmop, bitmop, bitmop output just over here. I only want the one. And I'm going to take my basic coverage macro and output it into my bitmap output, like so. Now, if I double click on my bitmap output, just here, I can select my output file, and I can select what kind I want. So maybe a PNG, and my output file in here will be terrain color with a U because it's important map. Not like those strange Americano people who have the light like, blooming 
no use in their letters. Dear, oh dear, oh dear. Okay. Now, the problem we have here is that when I build now, okay, which takes a moment or two because there's a few things to do, and click OK. If I was to save my bitmap output, it would be 505 by 505, which one isn't a standard height, and two is quite small for what I want. Um, I'm looking for fair level of precision, and I want at least 1024 for that. So we're going to have to change that. Before we do, though, we might as well put a couple more things that we might need into this. So let's have a look and see what we've got. Charm a member. There it is there. So we can also make a normal map if we need one, which we might. Okay, and then I can take my height field again, feed it into my normal map maker, and if I click on it, we can now see my normal map. I can then make myself a bitmap output like so, and I can lock the primary output of my bitmap to me RG to me to my RGB input of this. Okay. Now double click on it again, specify my output name. Before I do that, I'll make sure it's a PNG. And for this one it's going to be our terrain normal map. I always give things really incredibly obvious names. So now I'm going to save and I don't need to regenerate my height output. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a second version of this now. Okay, if I go to my world commands, project world parameters, and I'm going to make this, turn off that, ten twenty four, like so. So now it's ten twenty four by ten twenty four, and click OK, and then I'm going to file save as, and I'm going to call this tutorial O two. So the tutorial 02 for my file is the high res one. You might want to rename yours high res and terrain res. You know, it's up to you. Okay, now if I rerun this, it'll take a little bit longer. And the reason it'll take longer is because the resolution's higher, as you can see. So it's going to use more memory, it's going to use more stuff. And certain things in this, like the erosion, take considerably longer. But it'll be done in a second. There we go. So again, if I was to come down here and just look at our 3D view, that's what we started out with, just there. Okay, and if I go to my layout generator, you can see this is what the layout generator did. It's our terrace, there's our terraces, there's our erosion, and then these are the outputs in nice high resolution. And now, if I go to here, I can write my output to this disk. Done. I could do this automatically if I wanted, just by outputting the file on every build, but I prefer not to. And here. Okay, that's done. Now, if I just click off save, and just close this down for the moment. I'm not going to um, save the contents of my session, because it's always universally enormous. Okay, and so what I can do now, if I come over here, is start looking at start looking at a way that I can apply my material to this. So, first thing I'm going to need to do is just come up here. And what I normally do is make myself a new folder, and I'm going to call this tutorial mats because it's tutorial materials. Drag that across. And drag that across. There we go. Let's get a size I'm comfortable with. Okay, now in tutorial materials, what I can do is I can create myself a new material in here called terrain01. And that's our terrain material. And then just save and save this. Okay, and that's done. Now I can just click and drag that over to there. And absolutely nothing happens because it's the same damn material, even though it's going to compile the shaders anyway. Because it's a bit like that. Let's give it a second. It won't be long. There we go. 
what I'm going to do is I'm going to resume this um, in part three. That way you've got plenty of time to digest stuff. So, again, make sure that you have access to some textures because you're probably going to need them. And I will see you in the next part.